patterns are a category of node that generate collections or sequences of values. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at the pattern nodes that generate collections. First up is the linear node, as you will probably use this node a lot. You have already seen this node in a previous tutorial, so let's get a little bit more in depth now. The linear node generates a collection of values from its min to its max. The values in between the min and max are linearly interpolated. In layman's term, this means the values are evenly distributed over the indices. The values can be either negative or positive, and either in event flow or signal flow. The values are floats by default, but you have access to all the float variations and integers in the inspector. Next, we have the circle pattern node. This node outputs a float to collection of x and y coordinates for a circle. The radius sets the radius and the angle lets you open and close the pattern. Combining the circle pattern with a simple oscillator and creating an edge out of the circles can quickly yield some cool results and are the basis of many generative patches. The grid pattern will give you another set of x and y coordinates, this time to create a grid pattern. You can adjust the width and height of the grid with the size parameters. The amount of coordinates is set in the inspector by adjusting the amount of rows and columns. Note how the instance count is automatically updated in the transform node. Shuffle is also a great node to have in your arsenal. The shuffle node shuffles the values of the incoming collection. Here I am shuffling a grid pattern around. The smooth node is here to make the changes in between the shuffles visible. All right, in this example, I want to expand on the grid pattern shuffle that was demonstrated in the tutorial. Um, we're gonna do. We're gonna use it to create a cool mask effect. So what I'll start with is some rectangles. Just keep it as uh, at this size for now, and then I want to get the grid pattern. I want to get a shuffle. That is stuff we have seen before. Then a transform. Just to see that this works. The, we can scale this down a little bit and we can reshuffle them. Ah, of course, we need a smooth note because else we do not see these changes that are actually happening. So let's reshuffle that. Nice. That works great. Now it would be cool to do this on beat. So let's add the transport beat and let's say every bar we want to reshuffle. So we have the BPM at uh, 120. So every once in a while, we shuffle. I think the grid, grid could be a little bigger. Let's say 1.7-ish. Yeah, that's nice. Um, and now it would be cool to get a pumping effect on the rectangles. So what I'll do is I'll create an attack release node. And I want to do this on every beat. This does not need to be instanced because I want to pump every rectangle up. Put, it in, put this in the scale. That's way too much, but we'll fix that in a bit. We don't want to restart at zero. So this way we can get, um, well, it gets a lot more subtle. And we can reduce the size of the rectangle. Let's say one by one. All right. That's really nice. Um, next step, we want to create a mask out of it. So we first have to render it to a shape because the mask effect that we'll use just called mask, uh, requires a texture and this outputs a texture. So we'll use this as a mask and we'll use a texture in. I'll just put it to test card. And here we go, our masking effect. Now I think we can do, uh, put in some extras. How about we randomize the rectangles a little bit? So I'll get a random node one for the width, 
I'll copy it over, one for the height. And on each bar, I want to randomize the width and height of the rectangles. Now, I'll instance the random nodes to match the 25 shapes we're working with. So I'll put this to 25, 25. Now, of course, the shapes are way too big, so I have to tone this a little bit down. And also, I never want it to be zero because that would make stuff disappear. So let's see something like, like this. That looks pretty nice. Uh, one thing you could do is uh, in the shuffle node, there's a duplicates option. Didn't discuss that in the tutorial, uh, but this allows for duplicate shuffles. You'll see instantly what this does. Um, it allows to have two of the incoming values. So let's say value minus one, minus 0.7 to be at multiple locations. So you get copies. You can disable this, enable this. You can also, under visibility, make it visible. So you could get user, user control over it, for example. Um, and yeah, you can do fun stuff like inverting the mask, whatever you need. This is a nice template for creating a cool mask. And um, yeah, you can copy this and play with it and create your own version of it. Good luck. All right, now you have a basic understanding of uh, how coordinates work, instance coordinates work. I can introduce you to the polygon shape. Um, it's the most complex shape we have at the moment as it requires uh, a collection to work with. So what I could do is make float, uh, float two, because it wants a float two. Uh, technically you could feed it one point, but that doesn't do anything. You need at least three points to make it visible. So let's set up some, I'm just gonna set, put in some arbitrary values here. And this way we can have our polygon. Of course, you could also feed the polygon, for example, the circle pattern. Now it has 10 shapes, uh, 10 sides. But if I would change the amount of points, say to five, you could open and close it. There's a whole new way of creating shapes. And even you can, because it's a shape, you can put stuff like edges on it. So it gives you also more flexibility. Uh, we could even go back to what we did in the first uh, tutorial and say we're gonna put some, uh, we have some oscillators. Say create a sine oscillator and use a linear to offset it like we did before. We need an X and a Y. So like this, and we'll copy this party over to it here as well. And we have our nice polygon. Let's create an edge out of it. I'm a bit of a sucker for the edge. Not a fan of you too, though. Um, and now we can start playing with this and create some really funky, funky shapes. That's pretty cool. You could even go instead of sign. I'm just thinking out loud here. Uh, use Berlin noise. Uh, this would also needs to be instance. This would just create one point. I'll face offset this as well. You can get some really wild and wonky stuff going on. That's pretty cool. Um, I did use this for one of the examples that are in wire, in which I also used a circle pattern. And then you can crossfade between the two. This is just playing, or playing around. So we have the circle, and then you can introduce how much 
distortion you want all the way up to this weird shape that just does what it wants. So yeah, that's the polygon tool. Very powerful. Um, can create some really crazy shapes with it. Uh, one oh, one thing that would be cool, and I don't I have no clue if this works actually, or I'm <laughs> improvising here. What if we shuffle this? We know the shuffle node. This should create some. Uh... Well, it is interesting. <laughs> I don't know how useful it is. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I should stop here before I start creating more weirder and weirder stuff. Uh, but yeah, polygon tool, a uh, polygon uh, node. Enjoy, have fun with it. In this quick example, I want to demonstrate that the pattern nodes can also be used to move textures around. Um, so I'll create a texture in. This could be your effect or your video. For now, I'll just use the wire logo. Uh, I'll transform it. So we have our transform and use the circle pattern and let's say to 10. You do keep need to keep in mind that you're working with textures. So that's that's an uh, image of, uh, in my case, 1920 by 1080. Uh, so you don't want to instance this 100 times, but doing stuff like five instances or 10, that should be fine, uh, depending on your system, of course. Then I'll put this in the translation and you can see nothing is happening. Why is that? Uh, that is because textures work in pixels and not in uh, this um, uh, minus one to one ratio, like the numbers you see with the shapes. So the radius should actually be something like 300 before we see anything. And then of course, the scale is way too much. So I'll scale it down. And here we have our uh, texture. Make it a little bit bigger. So yeah, you can apply these kind of pa patterns and transformations onto uh, textures as well. Uh, just keep in mind that you don't pump up the uh, instance count too high. Uh, one little note that is handy to know the existence about in uh, when you're working with textures is the merge node. So let's say we have made our uh, um, texture and we have now 10 uh, instances as a texture, like I said, don't instance the textures too much. It's too taxing on your computer. Um, but now I want to add a blur to it. Blurs are known to be quite heavy uh, effects. So if I now put this, uh, these 10 textures into the blur, I get 10 blurred uh, textures, which is really taxing on your machine. This is not necessary. This is wasted GPU power. What I could do instead, uh, because we are now blurring 10 times, we could merge it and blur it. And visually, it's exactly the same effect, but the blur is now no longer an instance uh, signal, as the merge simply takes all the um, instances from either shapes or textures and merge it into one channel back again. This can save you a lot of processing power when you are working with textures. And that's it for this tutorial. Before you continue with the next video, I want you to have a look at the Perlin power and breaking the pattern examples that are already inside of Wire. Try playing around with it, change it up, and see if you understand what is going on in these patches. After you're done with that, you can move on to the next video.